Well, hello everyone. It has been a minute since I have made a video. Today, I want to talk to you about the Abrams X. I was out at AUSA 2022 and I got a chance to sit down and talk with some of the General Dynamics Land Systems folks. Great group of folks on this new capability that they have come up with. Now, it's important to realize that this is not a government funded contract currently. This is developed as an IRAD or an internal research and development built entirely by General Dynamics Land Systems to show what kind of capabilities that they can put forward. The Army can, if it chooses to adopt it, can decide what it wants, what it doesn't want, what tweaks it can make. There's a lot of things that can happen. So let's just go over a few of the things that, that I noticed and that were in the information provided to the media. It has dual CITV-like capabilities that replace the existing dual axis head assembly or the DAHA, which allows for the gunner to be scanning independently without moving the turret and the, the tank commander also to be scanning independently so that they can be looking and hunting for targets and then prioritize those targets and coordinate their fires. It also has the ability, the capability to launch and direct like a switchblade or other aerial assets from the bustle rack. There's a few spots that where they can then launch those suckers from. And then the cool thing about that is that you don't have to expose yourself to the enemy, you can detect an enemy out ahead of you, say there's an enemy OP, or there is a patrol base, or whatever might be out there, you can identify it, you can drop those switchblades on it and neutralize that threat without ever having to expose your presence to the battlefield. Currently affixed to this thing is the XM360 120mm main gun that was developed for the future combat system. The Army can decide whether or not it wants to go with this, whether it wants to go with the 130, which according to Tim from GDLS, it, the, it doesn't look like the Army is going to be going to the 130 millimeter. So we can go with the M256 or whatever the Army decides that it wants to go with or whoever the customer may be, may be that purchases this. It has a lightweight design, which means they pulled some of the armor out of the turret. I'm sure there's a lot of feelings already going on about that, but it's so that the Army can align with sort of the bridge capability um the bridge mobility so that the bridge doesn't collapse in certain theaters that's a big thing for the army and let's move into the actual vehicle into the turret it has 19 rounds in an auto loader which i can hear the groans already um and it, so that's just for the ready rack 19 rounds ready to go um, and a yet-to-be-determined amount of, of ammunition elsewhere and a carousel sort of thing. It does feature a blow-off panel, so if you incur a turret strike, it's not going to send the turret skyward like a T-72 or a T-80. It's, it's going to have a blow-off panel, which is a good design. It's a big old thick boy on the top of it. The crew is sitting three across from the driver. Um, basically, the way that it works that on the left is the driver, in the middle, you've got a crewman with a multi-function control thing that allows that center tanker to either drive the tank, gun the tank, control the UAS, the unmanned aerial vehicle that's that's cruising around like that switchblade or whatever is up there, uh, or a slew of other tasks. And then on the right would be the tank commander. Not a big fan of the layout. So for degraded mode, that's one of the questions I asked. If the system goes down, um, how do you do degraded mode? Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with degraded mode, that means that your electronics go out. You have to manually traverse and elevate the turret uh, and the main gun. Basically, one of those tankers in that three across setup would have to climb their happy butt through back into the turret. Hopefully the turret's in the right position climb into the gunner's seat and get to cranking. Um, I would suggest that maybe the TC and the gunner sit in the turret or at least the gunner or the TC sit in the turret so that if degraded modes happen, there's not, there's not a lot of shuffling that has to happen to get that tank back into action. It also has a slew of situational awareness cameras that might be easy targets for small arms or for fragmentation. Um, it's a lot of stuff to break. I'm worried about those cameras right there on the front. If the driver drives happens to drive up into a berm, I don't know how resilient those cameras are, but I guess time will tell. It's got some aggressive headlights that are an interesting feature. 
Uh, it does have an active protection system and it's to be determined. Now, one of the things I want to talk about for the active protection system is another capability that was showcased at AUSA, which is called the Rheinmetall Strike Shield APS. This is pretty cool because it decreases the electronic warfare signature or the, the EW signature that is prevalent in the battlefield that allows the enemy to detect through your electronic signature where your armored formation is. The strike shield says that it has a range of a detection range of about six kilometers versus what it states its competitors detection ranges are of about 380 kilometers. That's a pretty interesting capability. I had a chance to sit down and talk with the Ryan Mittal team. I didn't get them on video as I did with the GDLS team, but it's a really cool capability and I would like to see it employed. I like to see it tested a little bit more and to see if that can be integrated onto this tank along with the rosy smoke obscurance package. The rosy smoke obscurance package is really cool because you have instantaneous smoke as soon as you pop that salvo and you can back up and seek an alternate fighting position. Abrams X has laser warning receivers so that the crew can be alerted as soon as the tank is lased by a laser range finder or a laser guidance system. Uh, which will allow you to slew your 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 turret over to that direction and engage if it, you're within range or to seek an alternate fighting position. This is the laser warning receiver is nothing new. It's been in service for with different armies uh, for quite some time now. Another thing that this thing has is the NGVA architecture. Now the NGVA architecture is something that allows like smaller subcontractors to make stuff that's more modular that you can just plug into this thing. And it's a NATO standard. Um, basically what it, what the NGVA architecture is, is it makes the military system integration less risky and more compatible. And it is cheaper as well as, to integrate subsystems on military platforms that are following the same standards. The NATO standard opens up an opportunity for new markets, such as smaller companies that are developing military systems and equipment. Since all the subsystems are following the same open standard, there should be less risk when performing maintenance updates in the future as subsystems are capable of cooperating more competently with less risk of breaking the system due to divergent in infrastructures in normal people speak what does this mean it means that if a smaller company makes a radio for cheaper the army can plug that in or a cheaper this or a cheaper that they can plug it in and it'll work just fine without breaking the system that's fantastic to hear i want to see the real application of what i just discussed let's see how it really works it also features a 30 millimeter chain gun up top is 30 millimeter a little bit overkill? I don't know. I mean, you could harvest a lot of meat with a 30 mil. Now, a 30 mil increases the already relatively tall profile of this to significantly higher. Yeah, the 30 mil is pretty interesting. It's a cool capability for APCs if you don't want to fire heat rounds. If you have a Sabo loaded and you decide to engage an APC with that, like a BTR-82, um, cool. Uh, you can engage a helicopter, you can shoot a helicopter out of the sky. Um, it's cool for, you know, lightly armored vehicles such as trucks. I like the idea of having a 30 millimeter up there. Um, definitely a cool capability. Would you prefer to see a 7.62 up top or a 50 cal? Discuss in the comments below. Overall, I think the tank is a really interesting capability. Now for the engine. Everybody has been up in arms about the hybrid diesel electric power plant that comes from Cummins. But hear me out. This thing is able to have the same range with half of the fuel usage. And there's able to have, there's a higher torque output at the sprocket than with the current AGT 1500 gas turbine. I'm excited about this. It's a low form factor diesel electric that might even be able to be put into the existing fleet so that even though the Abrams X doesn't have front fuel tanks to accommodate that crew, if you throw this in the set V3s that are going to become the set V4s, you're going to have twice the range with a little bit of engineering changes that need to occur so that that, that Abrams fleet can now really go a lot further with a lot less fuel consumption. That's pretty significant. 
Overall, I'm excited to see where Jumbo Dynamics Land Systems is going. I understand the crew compartment isn't for everybody, and I have my reservations as well. Say you have something that comes through the driver's hole, the driver's compartment from the side hit, um, as we saw would happen during uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And now all of a sudden, instead of one casualty, you've got three, and you have a completely um, an op tank. So would I like to disperse the crew members? Absolutely. And then that comes down to the mathematics of where are we going to put the armor? How are we going to configure our systems in such a manner to meet these specific requirements? Are we going to stick with the lighter weight XM360 gun with the lighter weight gun and breech? Or are we going to go to another capability? There are so many things that need to be ironed out. This is a fresh prototype. There's a lot of work to be done, but it's looking pretty cool for what they've brought to AUSA, and I'm excited to see what happens next. I hope you guys can have a civil discussion in the comments below. Let me know what you think of it, and I hope to see you for the next one. Have a good one.